T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off with gratitude to our veterans today and always. Go USA! Dog 9 is pitching downrange. Stage one crop is nominal. Power and telemetry is nominal. T plus 55 seconds into launch, and we've had a on-time liftoff and a beautiful view of the Falcon 9 vehicle making its way to orbit. We are coming up in about 10 seconds here on max Q. That is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle will see during ascent. We should be able to hear that call out. Vehicles experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. And there's that call out for max Q. Coming up next is a rapid succession of events, starting off with main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO, followed immediately by stage separation. That's the separation of the first stage from the second stage. And then seconds after will be the lighting of our second stage engine, which we call second engine startup, or SES-1. That is coming up here in about 45 seconds. And back engine chill. And we've got a great view this morning with some pretty clear blue skies, the earth in the background. Now, if you're just now joining us, we are 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff, stage separation, and SES-1. What you see on your screen, you should be able to see the stages separate. About 10 seconds here. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. There, as you saw on your left screen, we had Miko and stage separation. On your right screen, we should see that second engine startup. And there's that second stage engine glowing bright red. Coming up next in about 30 seconds is fairing deployment. Now a reminder, this, is, this fairing is being flown for a second time, which is a first in SpaceX history. What you can see on your screen, on the left screen, those grid fins have been deployed. And there is our fairing Sorry, deployment. This is the first reflight of our fairing, so such an exciting mission this morning already. As the second stage continues to orbit with those 60 Starlink satellites on top, stage one is making its way home for the fourth time. Now stage one is going to execute two burns before hopefully it's standing there on our drone ship. The first one will be the entry burn, which occurs at about T plus six minutes and 23 seconds, so a little over two minutes from now. That's where we're gonna relight three of those Merlin engines and slow the vehicle down such that it can safely re-enter the atmosphere. From there, the booster will coast for just under a minute and a half. 
and then execute what is called the landing burn. That is where we're going to reignite this, a single engine, that E9 engine right in the middle of the booster, slowing the vehicle down to zero velocity, hopefully standing right there up on the drone ship. Meanwhile, stage two continues to fly nominally. We're hearing that MVAC-D power is nominal. It continues at full power. Stage two pressures, the tank pressures are nominal as well. First and second stage are on a nominal trajectory. We're just over a minute away from that entry burn. Meanwhile, stage one. Bermuda. Meanwhile, stage one continues to make its way down. That MVAC engine is powering that second stage of those satellites with 250,000 pounds of thrust. Okay, we're coming up in about 20 seconds on that entry burn. You should be able to see that on the left side of your screen. Meanwhile, stage two continues to burn nominally. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn. And as you see, that entry burn has begun. for another five seconds or so. Stage one entry burn shutdown. As you just heard, we had a successful shutdown of that entry burn. So for about another minute and a half, stage one is going to coast, making its way down to the drone ship. And at First T plus, and second stage continue to follow a nominal trajectory. And in just under a minute, that landing burn should start. Stage one transonic. Everything continues to be nominal on stage two. And in just under 10 seconds, that landing burn should start. Hopefully we'll get some nice on vehicle video. Stage one landing burn. We don't have that video just yet, but that landing burn has started. Second stage has entered terminal guidance. Stage one landing will deploy. It looks like we're not going to get video on the way down. Oh, but we have the drone ship. And wow. The Falcon has landed for the fourth time. Amazing. These boosters are designed to be used 10 times. Let's turn it around for a fifth, guys. Wow, fourth landing, that is super cool. So stage two, I believe uh, we have had Seco one. Um, we're gonna enter a coast phase. Um, so to, before we do that, we're gonna take a quick break. Sorry, it's very exciting over here. <laughs> Um, but so far, we've had a on-time liftoff, completed the first reflight of a fairing, the first time that we've flown and landed a first stage booster, and we also did confirm nominal ins insertion or good orbit of the second stage. So coming up next is SES-2, 
in about 20 seconds from now. Um, and this will be the shortest SES we've ever had, lasting just about one second. It's a short burn because the deployment orbit of, for these satellites isn't much different than our initial parking orbit, so we just need a quick burn to get us there. Waiting for that SES-2 and SECO-2. It's going to be very quick. And back ignition. And there it is. And second engine cutoff is complete. We are getting very close to the deployment of those 60 Starlink satellites. Now after deployment, the satellites will appear to be kind of clumped together, but that's totally normal. As you can probably imagine, 60 separate, separa 60 separate separation systems is super inefficient. It adds mass, it adds complexity, and therefore it adds cost. Instead, we deploy them all at once, allowing them to slowly disperse from one another and to do so without the use of complex mechanisms. They might even bump into one another, which if that happens is totally okay. The satellites were designed with this possibility in mind. There we go. Now, as they make their way off, next they'll start to slowly drift apart and then deploy their singular solar array pointed at the sun to begin charging their batteries. And over the course of the coming weeks, the satellites will use their onboard ion propulsion systems to raise their orbit to 550 kilometers, align into their orbital planes and properly space themselves out to providing internet coverage on Earth.